Every year, the DVSA publish the most common reasons that people fail their driving test. The top three reasons are poor observation at junctions, changing direction without checking the correct mirrors, and poor steering control. However, there are so many other ways that drivers can cause potential danger and fail a test that every time we do a mock test, we have to be ready for anything. We thought you might be interested to review some of the fails we have seen on our mock tests and learn what the driver should have done to stay safe and avoid that fault. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next video. And if you found this video interesting, please click the like button as it really helps other people find us. Test fail one. Can you spot the fault? After 200 yards, turn left, then take the second right. The speedometer inside the car was reading 27 miles per hour at that point, which is fast enough to be given a serious driving fault. On a real driving test, the examiner would probably state the correct speed Turn limit left, and ask the driver to slow down. After this mock test had finished, the driver said that he hadn't seen the sign and presumed he was in a 30 miles per hour area. Let's watch that again. To give us the time we need to plan ahead, we try to look 100 metres in front of our car whenever possible. This will ensure we spot any important traffic signs or developing hazards with enough space left to take action if necessary. Left, if we are in an area with many traffic right. signs, we prioritise the round signs as we must obey the order they show. Missing a no entry or turn left sign would not end well. Turn left, then take the second right. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. The Highway Code says that we must give way to anyone still crossing after the signal for vehicles has changed to green. Passing the crossing with a pedestrian on it would be a serious fault. It doesn't matter what colour was showing on the traffic light, it's not safe to squeeze past people in the middle of the road. We had already crossed the stop line when the traffic lights turned amber, so the driver was correct to keep driving at the first pedestrian crossing. Great lane discipline on the roundabout, but we need to plan further ahead. We can see the man starting to cross the road well before we leave the roundabout, and there is still plenty of time to stop smoothly. When the crossing has a person on it, it is much safer to stop and wait until it is clear. However, we must brake smoothly as following traffic might not see the hazard and expect us to stop. After 300 yards, go left on the roundabout. Whenever you're ready, drive on. The driver didn't spot the red car coming, pulled out and forced it to stop. We must ensure that when we pull away, we don't cause other traffic to break or steer to avoid us. Whenever you're ready, drive on. If we take another look, we can see the black car coming and then the red car. In this situation, we try to look through any parked cars or if that's not possible, 
edge out very slowly. We can only commit to moving off when we are sure that the road is clear. Poor observation like this could put us in danger, so we are happy to take as long as necessary to ensure it is safe to go. If we go over a speed limit by a few miles per hour for only a few seconds, then we might get away with it, but probably not 10 miles per hour over the limit. As before, the car's speedometer would have been showing over 60 miles per hour, and for the purposes of the test, that would be treated as accurate. It is easy to lose concentration on dual carriageways, but we must look out for temporary speed limits and slow the car before we reach them. These signs are large and clear, and we must obey their instruction, even if other traffic sometimes doesn't. Driving onto the pavement will usually be marked as a serious fault, as it shows the driver has poor steering control or judgement. Nudging the kerb or scraping along it would probably be given a driving or minor fault, but get your wheel onto the pavement and you won't be passing your test. We only need to park the car within 30 centimetres of the kerb. There is no need to get any closer and risk a fault. We slow the car right down to give us time to judge our position. Even after passing our test, we still want to avoid touching the kerb as it can damage the car's tyres or wheels. The driver changed lanes too close to the car in front, and there was less than one second of following distance. Being this close to another vehicle would fail a test, as we would be too close to react if the car in front braked suddenly. We should stay at least two seconds behind other traffic to allow us time to brake or steer smoothly. The next exit is about one mile away, so there is plenty of time to think. In this situation, we would check for space behind, reduce speed, and then change lanes once we have a safe gap. Another option would be to continue overtaking the slower traffic. Hopefully, we would be able to take the exit, but if that isn't safe to do, we can continue to the next exit and the examiner will adjust the test route. We stopped the car with the dual controls as we were likely to hit the parked car. We should normally keep a one metre gap to any parked car in case of a pedestrian stepping out or a car door opening. Driving any closer than that is taking an unnecessary risk and will be given a fault. If the examiner feels we are dangerously close to something and is forced to take action, a dangerous fault will be given. 
If we look ahead, the next corner is completely blind. We would slow the car to about walking pace as this gives us more time to spot hazards, steer and even stop if needed. At this speed, it is easier to decide what to do and where we can pass the oncoming car. On a real driving test, the examiner will need to see that we can handle situations like this. So take your time and do whatever is safest. The driver's incorrect signal misled the other driver, who pulled out in front of us and forced us to brake sharply. Our indicators are there to help others, not confuse them, so we must be careful to use them precisely and cancel them promptly if needed. There will often be several roads we could turn into when following a sat-nav, so we should look at the screen as well as listen to the voice prompt. This will help us understand which road we need and then signal at the correct time. If you get confused, it's okay to go the wrong way, if it's the safest thing to do. And then we'll turn left back into the car park. The approach speed to the junction was too fast and the car swung out across both lanes. The car was not in full control and could have caused danger if there was a hazard nearby. Turn left, back into the car park. If we look ahead, we can see the hedge is blocking our view, so we would approach this turn more slowly as there could be a pedestrian crossing the road or a badly parked car. The less we can see, the slower we should drive, as this will give us more time to react when we find something unusual on the, the road. Right into this small car park. This one. Stop. Thanks very much. We won't be doing that again. And when you're ready, drive on again. After the emergency stop, the driver doesn't spot the car behind is trying to pass us. The red car has priority and is still moving when we start to pull away, which forced them to stop. Also, our left indicator was left on after stopping. Perhaps this misled the other driver that we had seen them and would be stopping for longer. For this reason, we prefer to cancel our indicator after stopping so it isn't a distraction to others. One in three driving tests will include the emergency stop and pulling away safely is all part of the exercise. If we force someone else to steer or brake to avoid us then it isn't safe to pull away and we should wait. Every situation is different but if you aren't sure whether to go, then don't. If you are a little hesitant and miss a good gap, then you will only be given a driving fault. But take a chance and get in someone's way and you will be given a serious fault and fail the test. As you have just seen, it only takes a moment to lose concentration and put yourself in a situation that causes potential danger and therefore fails the driving test. To have the best chance of passing, we would recommend looking as far ahead as possible. Anticipate what could happen. 
driving slower when necessary and watching out for round order signs. If you found this video interesting then please visit our channel as there are over 150 more tutorial videos to help you improve your driving. If you would like to help us make new videos then please consider becoming a member of our channel. Thanks for watching.